Senator Kamala Harris is looking to take the leap from the West Coast to the White House, but she's missing key support from one group, voters in her home state of California. To explain why, we are joined by Melanie Mason. She covers politics for the Los Angeles Times and joins us now from L.A. Melanie, thank you so much for being with us. When Senator Harris first launched her campaign, she counted on California as a major asset. Explain why that is and what has changed. Well, California is so delegate rich. It really is sort of the major prize in the Democratic primary process. And when she launched her campaign, it did really seem as though she could count on California as a major asset. Her campaign launched in Oakland with a rally of more than 20,000 people. But the problem is that the home state advantage for California kind of isn't. I mean, we have had a history of politicians in this state, like uh, former Governor Jerry Brown, former Governor Pete Wilson, all sort of count on the state as being the foundation for their presidential runs. But the truth is, is that it's really hard to sort of have that home state loyalty in such a big state like California. Well, which aspect of Harris's campaign specific specifically is not resonating with voters in the state? I think that there's a couple of issues. The first is is that um, you know she seems to have a, some hard time defining herself ideologically. Uh, some of her rivals, such as Senator Elizabeth Warren or Senator Bernie Sanders, has really staked out the progressive flank, whereas uh, former Vice President Joe Biden really has established himself as a moderate. And for uh, Senator Harris, it's a little harder to see where, what lane she has carved out on issues like health care and on climate change. She has tacked pretty far left. But on other issues, she tries to establish herself as a moderate. And I think that has led to somewhat of a muddled message. Well, what about criminal justice reform? When it comes to Senator Harris's stance on that issue, what do voters there appear to take issue with? I think that the problem for Senator Harris is that the criminal justice conversation in the Democratic Party has moved so quickly. I think when she was district attorney of San Francisco and then attorney general in the state of California, she could truly say that she was a quote unquote progressive prosecutor and talked about things like anti-recidivism and reentry programs. But the conversation around criminal justice has moved so quickly. And I think that a lot of activists on the left wonder if Senator Harris moved quickly enough to catch up to that. And so some of her previous stances are now getting a closer and more critical look from primary voters. Well, what have voters that you've spoken to there in California told you about how they view Senator Harris? I think she's generally well liked in the state, but I also don't know if she's super well known. And again, part of that is probably because California is just so darn big. It's really hard for politicians here to establish a really well known reputation. It takes decades. People like Senator Dianne Feinstein, who have represented the state in Congress for decades, uh, to really fix themselves in voters' minds. Senator Harris, by comparison, is relatively new. And even though she has won three statewide elections here, uh, some of them were not particularly closely contested and it's hard to get on, on the radar of, of voters. So I think that there's a general sense of pride that she's, you know, in the top tier, um, seen as a, a major candidate for the president, but there's not longstanding loyalties uh, like you might see from uh, maybe some smaller states who get to know their candidates a little bit better. So who are voters looking to instead? I think that just as we're seeing in the national race, the top tier really has coalesced into three people. Senator Warren in recent polling has sort of emerged as the front runner. Um, she has really sort of had a slow and steady build and was out here in the state last week and had thousands of people at a rally in San Diego and I think really reflects what's been this growing support for her, ca her campaign. Vice President Biden has a lot of lingering support, a lot of goodwill from his tenure with uh, uh, former President Barack Obama. And then Bernie Sanders really has some, you know, longstanding support from his 2016 campaign. And one of the things to note for California is that this is not a winner take all state. Our delegates are de uh, given out proportionally by congressional districts. So Bernie Sanders, for example, is performing very well in polling in the Central Valley. There may be fewer people there than in big cities like Los Angeles or San Francisco. But if he continues to perform well there on our March 3rd primary, he could come away with sizable delegates, even if he's not the outright winner of the state. Well, when looking at this last fundraising quarter, Harris just barely managed to come in the top five. How much should we be reading into that? I think it's pretty telling, quite frankly. I think, first of all, it's telling overall that the two biggest fundraisers, Warren and Sanders, are the ones that have sworn off high dollar fundraising uh, in general. I mean, for years, California has been seen as the political ATM for the rest of the country. And the fact that you have these two candidates who are not interested in hobnobbing with big donors sort of shows that California's role in the money race is maybe a little different this time around. 
But even still, you have people like Biden and South Bend Mayor uh, Pete Buttigieg performing very well with California donors and what I think you would consider the traditional donor set. And that's really given Harris some competition, even among donors who she's had a good relationship with from her previous runs here in California. So how concerned is her campaign about this showing and fundraising? It can't be great. Yeah. I can't imagine that they're right. thrilled about it. But the truth is, is that they have their eye on a different prize right now, and that's Iowa. Iowa, of course, being the first state, they're having their caucuses in early February. And uh, as Senator said, she's effing moving to Iowa. Uh, and <laughs> she has spent a lot of time in the state, on the ground, introducing herself to voters there. And campaigning in Iowa is very different than campaigning in California. That's more of the retail, spend time in coffee shops, in people's living rooms. And in fact, she was uh, cooking dinner for some volunteers for her campaign um, on a trip earlier this month. And so I think she's really putting all of her chips in for this early state win, hoping that that kind of momentum will propel her forward. So Senator Harris saw uh, quite a bit of a fundraising bump after she went after Joe Biden during that very first primary debate, and she's yet to recreate a similar viral moment. With the next debate just a week away, what can we expect this time around? I think that obviously she has the ability to really turn around a moment. I mean, she's a prosecutor by trade, right? Mm -hmm. She has been in a courtroom. She knows how to turn it on, and she's incredibly well-spoken. And particularly, I think, in the context of this impeachment conversation that's going on in Washington, I would expect her to really try to capitalize on that. We've seen that in her stump speech, which has been retooled a bit in light of the news coming out of D.C. She's really going to try and sell herself as, look, I am a prosecutor. I have taken on criminals in the courtroom, and you and Democrats need a prosecutor to take on Donald Trump and to make the case against him. But the problem is, is that it's really hard to sort of recreate the magic. I think one of the reasons that her June debate performance was so uh, impactful was because it was a bit un unexpected. Uh, she was obviously seen as a, a top tier candidate, but uh, the fact that she sort of went in on Joe Biden, who was seen as, a, as an ally of hers, really took people off guard. It's hard to sort of recreate that sense of surprise uh, another time around. All right, Melanie Mason for us. Melanie, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me.